Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel, which is called Ham Radio Dude. And today we're gonna to take a look at a pre-built N-Fed half wave. Now, as you can tell right now, it's a real style N-Fed half wave, meaning you can pull this out here and you could reel things in. This is made by Flatlanders Mirrors in Rochelle, Illinois. And Mike, the owner of the company, is a ham radio operator who I run into quite frequently at HamFest. Mike sent this to me and asked if I would showcase it because he recently just upgraded the casing from a PLA to ASA material. ASA, if you're unfamiliar, has really good protection properties, uh, ultraviolet protection properties, uh, as well as it can withstand heat a little bit more. So if this is in the back of your car, if it was PLA, there's a potential for it to warp or potentially deform. And it's a lot less likely when you're using something like ASA filament material. As I mentioned, this material is ASA, it's 3D printed. And overall, this is just ready to go. It functions correctly. There was one thing I ran into as an issue that I wanna show you real quick. And I disassembled the antenna to add a counterpoise lug because this NFED half wave does not have a counterpoise lug. Now that's typically not an issue if, for example, you're running 18 feet of coax for 40 meters. But if you don't have 18 feet of coax, what's gonna happen is some of that current is going to go into your radio, which could be potentially dangerous. And I hope I said that right. It's like Kir Kirchhoff's law. And basically the current has to go somewhere. So if it doesn't have a counterpoise to go onto and you don't have enough coax length, then there's a problem. If you have enough coax length, they say you don't need a counterpoise, but it is nice to keep that extra current off of your coax. And that's why I just put that counterpoise into here. And I think that that was a great addition. So Mike's NFED half wave does use that larger toroid that you might see in my kit, which is almost three times the capacity of a T140-43 or the standard toroid that you might find in other kits online or other pre-assembled NFED half waves. And in theory, that should allow for a little bit more power through here. Mike says 100 watts on sideband, which I tested it at 100 watts all day today, and it's been fine. I tested it yesterday at 100 watts, it was fine, and I didn't expect it not to be fine. As far as digital mode goes or CW mode goes, I have not been able to test that, but we are using 26 gauge wire, I believe, and it's DX engineering wire. It's pretty strong and reliable, and there's only one thing that we have to know while we're on spooling all of this here is that when we get about 75% unspooled, there's going to be a capacitor in here. And basically we're adding capacitance much like you would with the dude coil. We're about two meters from the end of the NFED half wave. We added a coil, Mike added a capacitor. Just like we see there, and as you'll notice, and as you'll notice, Mike even weatherproofed the capacitor. So that's a, a really good touch to it. And in my experience while using this, I did drop this one sore twice by mistake, only just a couple of feet off the ground and it held up without issue. So I'm pretty impressed with that too. And let me just show you, it does reel up really nicely here. What I've been doing is I've been holding my hand like this, and that's because I added this counterpoise lug, which will turn. The inside of this is made up of approximately four parts. There's one part here, the main housing unit, another part here, and I believe there's one smaller ring part that's right in here. But as I roll it up here, all I really have to be cautious of is we've already passed it, but that capacitor, and I could just roll it up. One of the things I wanna mention is, is this tunes up just fine on all the bands. At the end of the wire antenna, which I'll show you here in a second, there is a fold over, so you could unfold it, fold it more or less, depending on where you wanna be tuned on either of the bands, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, 10 meters. But in my experience, everything was acceptable to use today as it was. And this is what I'm talking about, the fold over right there, as we can see it goes on. What I did is I ended up adding heat shrink once I found the fold over where I wanted it to be. And the heat shrink just kind of helps keep things together. At the end of this NFED half wave, you're gonna notice this carabiner and basically uh, you have a little bit of support here. I redid this a little bit. And the reason I redid this is because of this added heat shrink. But basically I have strain relief now and a place for the antenna to hold onto. And then this side just clips into my little dude like this. And if you weren't familiar, the little dude six is my six meter mast prototype at the end here. And this won't be the piece that I use because this was found online. I'll link it below. It's a 3D printed part. I just went ahead and I clipped in the carabiner. It worked really well. Again, I wanna mention that this is ready to go out of the box. Mike does all the tuning and he tunes things at 
30 foot sloper configuration. Again, that's why it's also really nice to have this twist here because if you're gonna operate differently, you might have different SWR readings based upon how close you are or how far you are off the ground. And Mike does all his testing at 30 feet off the ground and today when I operated at 20 feet, obviously that causes a little different interaction, right? So we saw a slightly different standing wave ratio than maybe expected at 30, but it was still fine in tune for me today. I went ahead and I operated this yesterday and today I made contacts into Puerto Rico, a couple of contacts into Canada, and when I activated the park this morning on 40 meters, I made contacts all over the East Coast, Georgia, into Canada, and I think I activated in five minutes and 40 seconds. It took a long time because I like to talk. I think we all know that by now. But anyway, once you're done reeling everything in, all you really have to do at that point is you take this little spool and you click it into place. One thing I want to mention though is sometimes you might find a reel that once you pull it out, you could lock it into place so it no longer pulls out or goes in. And with this, that's not the case. It's something to keep in mind. Because my initial thought was is if I had slightly off standing wave ratio, I might be able to bring in a little bit of wire and lock it into place so that it didn't turn anymore. And maybe there's a actually a thing right there too. Maybe maybe there's a little clip to put right here or something you could put right here that holds these two things together because if these two pieces are together, it won't move. All right, everybody, I don't have time to build it at the moment, but here at the desk, I thought of something else. This little switch right here, or the real part that can close and open, if you extend it out a little bit or you add something onto it, basically when you get to a certain point, you could lock it in one of these holes, which would then prevent this from moving any further. And maybe that's something to consider in the future, uh, or you can come up with something at home and I mentioned that though, because that would be kind of a really cool thing to play with different tunings and how it affects the capacitance and so forth. So, you know, you're looking at a NFED half wave antenna fully assembled for somewhere around $80 and I don't want to be quoted on that price, but basically let's think about this for a minute. Maybe, maybe you don't want to build a kit. And the reason you don't want to build the kit is you build a kit. That means you buy the kit or you piece it together. You could always piece together a kit and you think you're saving money, but then you have to buy a soldering iron. You have to buy a network impedance analyzer. You, you have to buy all the tools and accessories to make sure that it's properly all functional. And then you have to go through and you have to build the kit. So instead of doing all of that, Mike offers this fully assembled, which I think is a pretty good deal, $80 for a real style antenna. And I found it very easy to rapidly deploy as well as bring my wire back in, like I mentioned earlier, which was really nice. And so, yes, this has a need. Maybe somebody doesn't want to build the infed half wave antenna or they're incapable of it. This one's ready to go. It functions just as well at 100 watts on sideband as the dude tenna antenna that I sell. And that's because it's made up of mainly the same parts and it functions just about the same. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode, kind of get an idea how I operated. I had a good time doing it. And uh, thanks Mike for allowing me to uh, review this or to test this out. And what I will tell you is I'm gonna give this away. If you leave a comment in the comment section that says Wago, W-A-G-O, I'll know. And in my next live stream, we'll give this away. Anyway, thanks for watching the channel. Hope you had a good one. Take care. 73.